So, last time I made one of these, the sound wasn't that good, viewer. So I'll be talking a bit loud. I hope I don't disrupt anyone's attentions, etc. Because people are very uh, frail-minded things. Full of foibles, such as myself. Bus driver's not here, so I can yeah, ramble on for a bit without worrying about nothing. Um, apart from the fact that he's not here, I guess, and that there's a god who is watching my every move. Now, I tried to make a movie of uh, another subsurfing movie right here. And by the way, if you watch this far and you think this is a load of talk, I'd appreciate you telling me that. I really would. I mean, if you were to say that, listen, say, or Zaidi boy, this stuff that you put out there, regardless of the volume of it, you might be like, it's all rubbish. And then you might be like, listen, have you heard of quality versus quantity? I'd listen to that stuff, man. I'd take it like a man. Heck, I'd appreciate the fact that you went down a couple of inches on the page. Fuck, I'm focusing up for some reason. And, 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 you know, gave me a piece of your mind, man. I'm asking for that stuff. Bus driver's here. I'm not sure whether he minds me recording, but if he does, obviously, if you're bus driver and bus driver you got to follow the little law so when you're bus surfing you got to stay behind the uh, line here it's illegal for him to drive the bus apparently if you're standing in front of it and this fellow seems very friendly i think i might have said hi to him now that i recall actually we just exchanged hurried glances him coming out and me going in well whatever as long as you're not disruptive they don't really care as long as you don't swear and all this kind of stuff start beating your chest pulling out your hair and all that rubbish so once again the stance right you got the stance, and once people realize that you're actually doing something and you seem to know what you're talking about, they tend to bother you less. Pulling out of the dawn. Now this is the thing here. In order to complete the dawn, you need to lean into it. If you're shy about leaning into the curve before the curve happens, you're not gonna manage that shy. I can't do it every time myself. I did it last couple of times. Once in a while I'll uh, you know, flail or fall or fall onto a bar and look like an, I was gonna say goddamn fool. And that's really the path to success, man. If you can't look foolish on a regular basis, you're accomplishing nothing in life. How about that as a statement, dear viewer? So here it comes. We're in spiral up out of here. And it depends. It just depends on a given day, the mood, the sway, the bus, the personality of the driver, whether he's got a heavy foot. But sway into the curve. You see me leaning into this stuff? According to Einstein, it's like a curve of space and time, man. Can you believe that's nonsense? Newton was like every body, every mass has gravity. And Einstein comes along and he says this crazy thing that everyone believes. I don't believe it. I don't even know what the hell they're talking about. Everyone believes it nowadays. All scientists will say, yes, gravity is a curve in space-time. You'll be like, excellent. That's an excellent thing you just said. Now, what the heck does it mean? Next stop, Lee Hill Road. Beautiful day in Toronto. I want to put this thing away because I got nothing to say, but you know what? Everything is, is on some level, everything is just as important and unimportant as anything else. What do I mean by that? Well, here's my question to you, dear dear. Are you happy right now? If you're happy, then what does it matter, right? Like, what does it matter? On the other hand, if I can provide you with some useful information slash guidance that might help you in something, does that make that thing I just said more important? Or does that make you proportionally, um, you know, I'm sorry to say, like, ignorant. Like, what's the deal? Like, it's maybe it's something you should have figured out for, for your, on your own. And that's the only reason you're accepting it. I don't know. I mean, the whole thing is this. My problem is this. Everyone knows you need rules, right? Of course. How could we have civilization without rules? Everything follows rules. Yeah. Willingly or unwillingly is the process. <laughs> Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, God the most glorified, most high viewer. Finally, this is what he says when he created the heavens and earth, etc. Well, at first he says that they were one and he separated them. And then he says the universe is expanding, etc. But he's like, listen, you guys settle down and obey me willingly or unwillingly, the heaven and the earth. And they were like, willingly, of course. Man, apparently, is the only abject creature of the Almighty, according to this line of thinking. Uh, who has the ability to kind of choose for himself, man and spirits, but let's just keep it in the realm of mankind. So, you understand, everything does what it's going to do. If you saw a lion eating grass, 
That wouldn't be normal. And then people are like, man, I'll eat whatever I like, man. Go right ahead, man. But don't tell me not to eat meat, and I've got, like, sharp teeth. Right? Does this make any sense here? I'd appreciate your comments, as always. Those damn things are more dear to me than you can imagine. You're probably thinking, this guy's got a hundred videos on YouTube and his channel, and he's got, like, people watching, like, thousands of people watching some of these videos, and it's all good, and all this kind of stuff, righteousness. No, man, it's all rubbish. These are all random people that just flitter about. The person actually says something meaningful, he's the person I'm looking for, even if it's a criticism. In fact, especially if it's a criticism. You might be like, what was that rubbish you ranted on about the universe? It doesn't say in the Quran that it's expanding. Well, it depends on how you interpret it. It says, we created, uh, we created the firmament, I guess, would be like a given translation. And we are the expander, essentially. Something like that, or its expander. So, I don't know, you go figure it out if you like. The vibe up there is getting kind of stale. And uh, the weather's nice. <laughs> Isn't that great how the focus goes in and out here? It's kind of like a special effect. It's a ghetto special effect. So if I want to give you a white glare, basically go like this. Oh, didn't work this time. I'm still like trying to figure this stuff out. So like the thing is, I like talking, right? I call it talk too much either. The only way I can get away with it is by doing this stuff here, talking to you, wherever the hell you are. You might be some kid in 2062. I have no clue. But I hope the sky is still blue for you, as it is for me too. Because based on the way that your grandparents are messing around nowadays, like folks like all of these fine people who do nothing, although they know that climate change is an inevitability or whatever, a global catastrophe. If, you, if you've watched that movie of Gores, I listen, my little guy, you can probably Google this stuff. You just Google, if you, have, if you don't know about it, you Google it, an inconvenient truth, right? So this guy, Al Gore, back in like 2000, it's about 50, 60 years before your time, son, he, uh, he ran for president or something. And of course, because Americans are so goddamn stupid, like most nations, unfortunately, including Pakistan, is the worst. I'm Pakistani. I say like this. Pakistan, but in your time, of course, there's no Pakistan. Because, I mean, right now, I, I say like, it's the country that's the most dysfunctional that is still a country, basically. Uh, I can, and I can I go head to head with anyone on that stuff. Anyone. In every respect, man. Totally screwed up. Everything is totally screwed up. I mean, of course, you go there, you can have a nice life, that's besides the point, but, like, from a structural perspective, young man. <laughs> All right, here we go, back to the front of the bus. So, yeah, global catastrophe, it's 2013 right now, kid, just in case you're not looking at the timestamp or it's gone or whatever. I'll just mention it to you. Now, like, what Al Gore is saying and all these guys are saying, and by the way, it's 99% of scientists out there, if we get 2013 here, 99% of scientists out there, there's no controversy. They would ha make you think there's a controversy. They call them climate skeptics. It's all rubbish. There's no skepticism. Any scientist who's worth his salt who actually puts out publications in serious scientific journals doesn't even talk about this stuff, man. It's er er incontrovertible. What people will say are things like, well, they'll say, well, you know, we went through an ice age, we went through a freaking molten age, we went through this age and that age and its cycles and human beings are insignificant. How the hell could we have altered the the climate on, on the planet? It's inconceivable. Well, you say what you say, but I'll just say go watch An Inconvenient Truth. I was convinced. I just had to watch that thing once. I became a green person, whatever the hell that means. I don't have a car anymore. I used to drive a 40,000 dollar Jeep. I sneer at people in cars now, and I sneer at people on the streets because they think they're a sub, sub... What is it? They think that they're less than people in cars. It's so funny, and it's, it's absolutely the other way around. Here. It's absolutely the other way around. The guy in the car gets into the same box every day, gets into the same box every day, and he doesn't interact with the world at all. He barely gets any fresh air. Stale environment, my coffee cup goes here, there's my lighter, there's the stereo, and all this rubbish, and he tunes out. What the hell is the point of a world if every time you go out into it, you tune out? You tune into, like, Jack FM or whatever. Me, on the other hand, here's what I do. That's exactly what I'm doing right now. Boulevard. Inventing a sport called bus server, talking to people. Dude, I'll pick up viewers. Like, if you're a 2013 person and you live in Toronto or know about Toronto, you might know that Young and Dundas is the. Ah, uh, what is it? Young and Dundas is. Uh, it's basically like Times Square in, of uh, New York, like Times Square of Toronto, 
right? Where the hell are we anyway? Cliffwood, Cliffwood North. All right. Okay, if you're here, say very quickly. Cars suck. Walking rules. Okay. Being rude sucks. And living per as per the social contract sucks. I want to write about it, but there's too many things I want to write about. The social contract is essentially this unwritten, unspoken about social contract. It says, for instance, you can't just sit there rambling away. And if you've got a camera out facing you and you're holding it, that's only nominally better. These fuckers don't know that I'm, I'm liable to just turn this thing off and continue ranting. Just because the stuff I say is like me thinking out loud. It helps me organize my thoughts. All the famous philosophers all did this stuff. All of them. As far as I can tell, Dubowski, Wittgenstein, Nietzsche. Nietzsche was he was basically a madman. He was a basically a poor madman. A lot of people consider me slightly insane. My name is Hussein and people are like, well, definitely not him, that's for sure. Where are we now? We're on the drive. Okay, so, cars, right? I guess we're done with cars, right? So Young and Dundas met some girl, beautiful Italian lady, wearing $700 designer shoes and all this rubbish. We just go around the back and start having sex, man. And we, we, we spent the night on Nathan Phillips Square, I, I kid you not, right next to the statue of Winston Churchill upstairs on the concourse, all night, making up, all fucking night, and then fog was coming in and all this rubbish. Let me just say one thing to you. I would not have been able to experience that had I been a car-minded person. I'm telling you what, man, I love my own car. Anyway, viewer, I gotta go. The only question is, should I keep this thing rolling or not? I might as well, man. I might as fucking well. You know? Like, why the hell not, man? I'll just keep uploading these shits, man. Why not? You never know. Maybe a kid in 2062 will watch this stuff. Thanks, sir. I'm getting off. Please don't run off and get me jammed in the doors and all this kind of rubbish. Because I'm a rambler. Go on, man. Yep. Thanks, man. Good ladies do exist. They're in Samaritans. Wait for the fox, man. See? Nice lady there. She pointed out my jacket was missing and we appreciate that stuff very much. So, uh, so there you go. School's out. Kids are coming out and about. Kids are actually the only real people around nowadays. I, I, I like to think that Generation Y is essentially they're the most intelligent group of people on the planet. And when you start saying stuff like that, fuckers think you're a pedophile and all kinds of nonsense like that. Now the question is, should I get cigars or many cigars? Probably just cigars. Nice truck, man. So it's like, people will be like, what about my privacy, man? Hey, stop filming my kids, man. But if I was a CTV truck, we wouldn't have anything like that. What these idiots don't realize is that it's all the same. You're out in public, therefore you consent to be seen in public. Is it that simple or not that simple? I don't know if it's any simpler than that. Now you might say, listen, you're out in public, but I didn't want to be put out in front of the whole world. Okay, if my neighborhood sees me, that's fine. If you say that to me, I will say yes. But if I say that to you and you say yes, that's, that's really not cool, man. I'll give it to you still, but whatever. You know what we're gonna do, man? We're gonna do a Django, man. Fucking Django move. Now, I've been in the shop like three times, four times. I wanna become a fucking uh, member of their, uh, what is it? Their little dingy there. What is it? I should hold the camera this way, I guess, right? I'm not sure if it's this way or this way. It doesn't really matter, man. Who cares what way the frame is or if it's up or down or left or right or single or center? But I should try and start making a habit of doing this. I'll try it this way and see what happens because it becomes more apparent to onlookers you know, what I'm doing becomes more apparent and they tend to bother you less once they know that A, you know what you're doing and then B, they know what that is. So, we're gonna go in there, we're gonna ask the guy if we can rent Django Unchained. That's it, that's all we're gonna do. Afterwards, I'll come out and I'll give you a little fucking, uh, what is it, a commentary. See all those kids over there? Those are the smartest fucking people on the planet right now, kids. Anyway, so here we go, Django Unchained. Now, the guy may or may not notice the camera. He may or may not know what the hell's going on. He probably will. But if he says turn it off, I'll turn that shit right off. Now if he flies into a range and calls the security guard in here, I don't know man. I really don't know. I'm trained security myself. This is not the guy's sight, so we'll just see what happens. I wasn't. As you can tell, oh yeah, I was gonna say you're welcome. I was gonna say as you can see kids have absolutely no manners today. But uh, that one over there apparently does. So here we go. Django and chained. Oh, it's this beautiful lady. Would you like to wait for YouTube ma'am? I'm I'm advertising your shop. She didn't seem to like what I was up to. Are you guys in line? And if so, may I cut in front of you? All right, so forget Django Unchained. I was gonna do this stuff with her husband, 
and he's the man who gives me the run around most of the time, but she's a lovely lady, and so I won't bother her. I wasn't going to bother the man either. Ma'am, I'd like a pack of pom-pom cigars, please. And, uh, yeah, so there you have it. So what, we're at Don Mills and uh, Steel's right now. It's a great store, man. they got great movies in here. The only problem is, like, I don't carry a physical credit card anymore, viewer. Like, I got a number. It's online and all this rubbish. But it's just too tempting to, like, spend stuff you don't have when you got a physical credit card. I would say that 99% of people who have a physical credit card are also in a lot of debt with said card maxed out. Pom pom cigars. People think I'm a badass guy for doing this, smoking these. No chemicals, right? Natural tobacco leaf, all this kind of stuff. You can't compare it to cigarettes. Cigarettes have like 50 industrial strength chemicals in them that you wouldn't even give to your enemies if you, if you have any. Thank you, ma'am. You're such a nice lady. I really like coming here when you're here. You're so nice. I really like you. You're so sweet. <laughs> I think I think it's because your husband's mean. That's why God made you very sweet, huh? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm kidding. Oh, I don't need it, ma'am. Thanks. Isn't she sweet? Like, she's like the bomb, man. Like, people like that, I love people like that. They could be young, they could be old, they could be kids. I couldn't care less. I'd do anything for a person like that. Like that lady, if I, like, anybody, man. Even if I saw a hardened God, I don't see, the thing is, I, I, I don't know how to say this to you, dear viewer. I really don't hate anyone. I really don't. I don't, I don't know how to hate someone. Let me put it that way, because I have to assume there's a reason for him acting the way he's acting, right? Can't, 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 can't that be the case? Or rather, mustn't that be the case? So people are watching me now, ranting and raving. I gotta compose myself. If you find yourself in a situation where you feel uncomposed, you stop, compose yourself, and then do the gentleman thing, which is say, hey, if anyone has a problem with me filming them and putting their asses, their skanky little asses on YouTube, then just let me know about that shit. You can l l lend your hand to the so-called privacy rights fucking movement. All right. Ollie it, man. Ollie that shit, man. All right, whatever. So, what I was saying is that he ollied and he, and he, and he didn't land it, obviously, right? Um, I could hear. But, uh, beautiful day. Now, here's the thing. Typical guy is wondering, what the hell was I just saying? And uh, what can I say that's interesting? All this kind of rubbish, it's rubbish, it's total rubbish. I was saying earlier on the bus, and I was saying the same thing walking out here the other day, dear viewer. It's like, what is so important? Like, what was I saying that was important, and who the hell cares? What's important? Is it something that was meaningful to you? Is it some extra information that helped you accomplish something that you want? None of it is meaning meaningful apart from your perspective, right? Is it not the case? So this guy who, for instance, is a stone-cold killer, that everyone hates, not me by the way, goddamn guy, is it possible that the whole world's wrong and this guy was right? Of course it is. Joan of Arc, man. All these goddamn people. But on the other hand, is it possible he was wrong? Absolutely. John Dillinger. John Dillinger shot a fucking cop at point blank range. Shot a cop at point blank range. John Dillinger, the gangster. You know, the fucking gangster of Chicago. Capone, right? Bugsy, right? Bugsy Malone? Capone? Not Dick Tracy. <laughs> Dick Tracy is fictional. Here's the thing, man. You like movies, right? You like books. You like stories. Read history. Study people's lives. There's a saying that the truth is stranger than fiction. That saying is not just an understatement. It's borderline wrong. It's, so, it's such an understatement that it's actually wrong. I'll, I'll say that, I'll say that the statement that truth is better than fiction is really just a stupid thing to say. It's not, it's like saying for instance that look at this stuff that you're looking at and then you compare that to anything, CGI, paintings, matte paintings. Can you compare it to anything that God's created? I mean, if, if you believe in God, that is. I mean, I'd be hard pressed to think all this stuff just popped into being by itself. I, I, think, I think that's an improbable, if not fanatically fucking stupid thing to say or think. How could this tree just have sprouted out the ground? That's what they'd have you believe. It's just sprouted out of there. But, but it's organized. No, it just looks organized. But it's got goddamn leaves. They'll say, well, listen, this is what happened. Then they'll roll their eyes at you. They'll be like, listen, man, 
And I'll get back to this other stuff, perspective. I got it all in my head. Fear, I got so many things in this head of mine that it's burst in my head, figuratively speaking. Now here comes a guy, and I think it's this. Immediately upon my walking in front of him, he accelerates. That's what people do. They think that they're the king of the roads and that they should, uh, they should ego out on you. They fucking accelerate. They do it without even thinking. I'm trying to train those fuckers not to do that. Why? Because I know what's going on. You'd be like, but that's madness. What the hell are you going to do? Are you going to try and correct every single fucking thing that enters upon your awareness as being even slightly incorrect, either to address it or to understand a different state of perspective, a different perspective that would allow you to accommodate that into your worldview, thinking that it's not as bad as you might have thought, etc. Yes, actually, yes. All of that and more. All of that and way more. You'd be like, that's madness. I'll be like, no, it's Sparta. So this guy comes up the hill, King Leonidas, and he's like, Spartans, what's your, what's your, uh, what does he say to them? He's like, Spartans. He's like, what's your profession? They're all like, huh, huh, huh. They didn't even say a goddamn word. It was obvious they were soldiers to the teeth. And the reason he had to do that is because he'd come, had come across a friend of his from a neighboring city who, who, who had a band of people with him, people. He had just normal people that were going to help him fight and, and, and stop the Greeks. Now, see, what people overlook in that scene, among other things, including Snyder, man, there's an infinite number of interpretations of everything. Zack Snyder's coming out with the new Superman movie, and you know what? It's gonna be eminently watchable, period. Every single fucking thing about that movie is gonna be perfect. Whether or not you like it, who cares, man? You should study it nonetheless, if you think you like movies and all this kind of rubbish. I'm really into movies, man. Oh yeah? What was the last DVD commentary you watched, man? I like that shit better than the movies. The movies themselves. Give me a good commentary over a good movie. There's no choice in my mind. One is entertainment, one is knowledge. One is like zoning out, one is zoning in, right? So in any case, I'm blabbing away. Spider-Man, Superman, I have no idea what I'm talking about anymore. This is a neighborhood. We're actually gonna be leaving here pretty soon. You know, I keep talking about how my landlord had me in a death throttle and I had marks on my neck. You can see there are no marks on my neck. Why? Why? Cause the next day after the attack, I noticed the marks had diminished significantly. And I says to myself, thank God for that. And in the Torah, the Jewish book, the Old Testament, God, apparently, if there is such a being that exists in the high heavens, etc. Um, among other things, he helped create something like this. You think a, a human mind could have come up with this stuff? You'd be like, oh, of course there's a human mind, man. No, man, this stuff is creativity. Even the guy who created this car, so to speak, will tell you, man, I have no idea what I was thinking, man. It's the middle of the night, I'm doodling, and suddenly, bam. I'm thinking about all these late and great models and the chargers and the, well, I don't know if that may have been a charger, but whatever, right? The Mustang is the prototype for that kind of rubbish and the Mustang's still the car I want, but I'm rambling here, I'm rambling. So, in the Torah, as per the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that is God, the most glorified in the most high, he said, listen man, or man, or mankind, or whoever this message reaches. We revealed to the children of Israel, woman, wa in shakartum, wa means and, in, if, some, in this sense it's if, it's sometimes translated as verily. For instance, in Allah ala kulli shayin qadir, verily. You know, you might say, Allah ala kulli shayin qadir. God is powerful over everything. But when you say, in Allah ala kulli shayin qadir, it's kind of adding an emphasis. It's making it a definitive statement. It's almost like saying, it's God who is powerful over everything. So, in shakartum, if, in the sense, you are grateful, or if you give thanks, shukriya in Arabic, in Urdu means thanks. In Farsi, there's a similar word. In Arabic, the word is shukran, shukran. 
All right, like shook and ran. <laughs> shook, run. That's, all, that's the only Arabic you need to know. Whatever someone says to you, you say shukran. You'll get along just fine with everybody. Because that's the key of life, man. Anyway, so, you know, like the, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him and his family. Hamd is, is similar to shukr. Shukr is thanks. Hamd is praise. Praise is, is it, it contains shukr in some respects. And it's something far more. I mean, the real key is, is hamd, which is credit, glory. Everything goes to God. He started everything, he guides everything, he sets everything up, if you believe in that kind of stuff. Now, what he told the children of Israel, apparently in the Torah is, listen folks, la in shakartum la azidan lakum. The Quran rhymes, by the way, let me just be the first one to tell you if you didn't know that. Anyhow, if you are grateful, if you're grateful, we will increase for you. La azidan lakum. La azidan lakum means, uh, like ziada. Ziada is, uh, well, what it is, is basically, God, it's so swelteringly hot out here. I'm just wondering what I'm going to do the rest of the afternoon. I got to pray at some point, and then I got to call this lady. I guess what I want to do, what I really want to do after having a smoke here is go inside and see if I can find another room. So what it is, is that I found a place. It's a good place. In a sense, it's a perfect fucking place. It's the perfect fucking place. Why? Because it's a place. And if I was meant to be there, it's perfect. Do you understand? Every goddamn place I live in is the perfect place. But I will say I've never missed any place other than Toronto. Now you can see some neighbors scurrying about over there. Hey, sir, how you doing? Having a good day over there? As you can see, the Torontonians are suspicious, unfriendly bunch. <laughs> but I love them. You gotta love him. I'm here. What the hell am I meant to do? Hate him? That's what our sixth Imam said, peace be upon him. He's like, listen. He's like, what is there other than people? What is there other than people? It's all people. What the hell is there other than people? You wanna feed yourself? It's people. You wanna have a good time and laugh and make jokes and shit? You gonna, are you gonna go like me and do it with the animals in the forest? That's what I fucking do. I got a clip on here called the badger, man. Clip on here called the fucking badger. Right? So people think I like badgering them. The truth of the matter is I gotta do shit like this. I gotta do shit like this just to let them know that fucking I'm either insane or something like that.